Section three will describe the activities and strategies for implementing the Young Athletes Program. The activity guide is the primary resource for the Young Athletes Program. It's divided into four sections. The introduction, the Young Athletes Activities, resources for implementers, and additional resources. The equipment is described for each activity as well as suggested substitutions for items that can be found around the house or at very minimal cost. For example, instead of using a balance beam, you could use masking or floor marking tape or a rope taped to the floor. When you create your activity with your group, make sure to use the list of suggested substitutions as they are better for at-home implementation. Equipment is one thing that can easily be modified to make activities easier or more challenging. You can change the size, shape, texture, or sound created by the equipment. For example, a ball that is large, has a rubbery texture, and is squishy or compliant is easier to catch. These factors are particularly helpful for children with sensory sensitivities, like some children with autism, who don't like the sound of loud noises or who may really enjoy different types of textures. Changes to equipment can also decrease injury and increase success. It's important for coaches to have different equipment options to best meet the needs of each child. Each of the eight skill areas in the activity guide can be done with one child or a group of children. These skill areas are shown here. Within each skill area, activities are listed in order of difficulty, starting first with the easiest skills and progressing to harder skills. The order of the skill modules follows normal motor development, where basic skills are practiced before advancing to more complex skills. There is no timeline or order that you have to follow with the activities. Let the child's learning speed and ability set the pace for how quickly he or she progresses through the program. It's okay to take a step back and practice skills in a previous module if a child has not mastered those skills or needs to refresh the skills. The key is to adapt the skills to the needs of each child or the children in the program. Through the young athletes' activities, health and fitness can be taught in a fun and engaging way. Developing healthy habits starts at an early age and will bring lifelong benefits. There are health and fitness lessons built into the activity guide, and there is a section in the guide with additional healthy play ideas. Children in the program are encouraged to eat healthy snacks and drink water. Parents are encouraged to talk about healthy habits at home as well. One example of healthy play activities is the musical markers game. This is a kind of musical chairs in which children walk, run, dance, or do other movements. And when the music stops, they have to find a floor marker to stand on. The healthy play can take the form of floor markers with fruits or vegetables. And when the music stops, the child needs to stand on one of these healthy foods and name a healthy snack. Motor skills are not the only thing that's learned during the Young Athletes program. Coaches can also emphasize colors, numbers, letters, and shapes into the different activities to promote cognitive development. For example, children can say the color of the colored floor markers during the rock hop game, or count the number of times they catch a scarf during the scarf game. Here's an example of the activity terminology used in the activity guide and on other materials from the program. The following categories of information may be provided for each activity. Group play provides activity variations for children to play together. Healthy play includes variations that teaches about nutrition or fitness. Optional activity describes another activity that uses equipment that's not part of the primary equipment list, but practices similar skills. Tips for Observation provides ideas to support coaches, volunteers, and parents leading the program. Equipment Needs provides a list of the equipment for that activity. It is essential that coaches understand each activity and watch the videos provided online. Volunteers and other facilitators should also read the activity guide or curriculum and watch the videos to become knowledgeable about assisting the tasks. Young Athletes is one of the most comprehensive and free programs available, and the videos are an incredible resource. Now we will transition to talk about each of the skill areas briefly. The first module is called Foundational Skills. 
Foundational skills helps children become aware of how their bodies move in relationship to their surroundings. It teaches basic health and fitness skills. Here is an example of the instructions for the activity Tunnels and Bridges. In this activity, the children and adults make tunnels by touching the ground with their hands and feet with their hips in the air. The other children crawl through the tunnels. To make a bridge, the children and adults get down on hands and knees and the other children try to climb over the bridges. The second skill module is walking and running. Walking and running skills enable children to explore their environment and are part of all recreational activities, sports, and learning experiences. Here is an example of the sidestepping activity. In this activity, children will face forward and step to the right or left onto different floor markers. Healthy play could be incorporated by using pictures of fruits or veggies as floor markers. The children can say the name of their favorite fruit or veggie when he or she steps on that picture. For the children with physical disabilities requiring the use of a walker or wheelchair, you can place floor markers further apart and the kids can walk or roll around the floor markers. The third skill module is balance and jumping. Balance and jumping are important for many activities and sports. Balance helps children climb stairs and walk and run on uneven surfaces like grass or sand. Practicing balance skills can help develop confidence for more complex skills like jumping and leaping. Here is an example of an activity called follow the coach. The children will copy the coach's movements, which all require balance. The activity can include standing or walking on tiptoes or heels, standing with one foot directly in front of the other, which is called tandem stance or standing on one foot. The fourth skill module is trapping and catching. Trapping is when the child stops the ball with their body and not their hands. Catching is when the child uses his or her hands to stop a ball that is thrown, bounced, or rolled. Both skills require the child to watch the ball and position their body or hands to intercept the ball. Here is an example called bounce catch. In this activity, the coach or volunteer bounces the ball towards the child. A child must catch the ball without moving his or her feet. I find that when I practice trapping and catching skills, I have to be really precise when I throw, bounce, or roll the ball to a child. I actually provide training to volunteers to properly throw, bounce, and roll the ball to increase the child's success, especially at the beginning. If a child has difficulty with trapping or catching, the coach or volunteer could use a larger ball, move closer to the child, do a countdown to help the child prepare for the ball, and use verbal cues like clap the ball or hug the ball. When the child gets better at trapping or catching the ball, then I might throw the ball a bit harder or faster, with less of an arc, or with a variable direction, like a little to the left or right, so the child needs to adjust his or her body to trap or catch the ball. The fifth skill module is throwing. Throwing requires strength, flexibility, balance, and coordination. To build these skills, children will practice activities including rolling in addition to throwing with one or two hands. Here is an example of an activity called tunnel train. In this activity, the children will stand in a line with one child in front of the other and their legs apart making a tunnel. The child at the front of the line will roll a ball forward through the tunnel pretending the ball is a train. Child goes to the back of the line when they're done with their turn, and the next child attempts to roll the ball through the tunnel. The sixth skill module is striking. Striking means hitting a ball or object with one's hand or with an object like a stick, bat, paddle, or racket. Striking is needed for tennis, golf, softball, volleyball, and floorball. Here is an example of an activity called beginning floorball. In this activity, a ball is placed on the ground. The child will hold a dowel and stand sideways facing the ball. The child will strike the ball with the dowel with the thumbs pointing down, like in hockey or in golf. Different household objects can be substituted if the coach or parent does not have a wooden dowel or ball. For example, my daughter has a little kid's mop and broom set. She could use the broom to strike one of her small stuffed animals. The seventh skill module is kicking. Kicking describes when an object is hit with a foot and requires eye-foot coordination and balance. Here's an example of an activity called passing practice. 
In this activity, the children stand in a circle and are encouraged to kick a ball to each other. To make the activity easier, you can use a larger ball and have the children make a smaller circle so they don't have to use as much force to kick. To make the activity more challenging, you can make the circle larger, requiring further distance and force, and have the children trap the ball before kicking it. The eighth skill module is called Advanced Sport Skills. In this module, children will build upon the skills they learned in the previous skill modules and put them together in a sports context. They will learn about working with teammates and developing strength, power, and coordination. Here is an example of an activity called Pass and Shoot. In this activity, the children will stand in a circle with a hoop in the middle. The children can throw, bounce pass, or pass the ball three times so that the third person has to shoot the ball into the hoop. This activity requires that children can throw and trap or catch a ball. They also have to pay attention to their teammates and call attention to a teammate that they would like to pass or throw to. If one of the children is still having difficulties catching, then the ball can be rolled or handed to them instead of thrown. Okay, now that you know about the major components of the Young Athletes Program, let's transition and briefly discuss the at-home implementation. Please note that we will cover at-home implementation in more detail towards the end of this class, right before you submit your group activity for review. The basic delivery for the at-home program does not look too different from the other delivery models. The program is recommended to be done a little bit more frequently, at least three times per week, with a shorter duration of about 20 to 30 minutes per session. However, the setting and people involved will likely be different from the in-school and in-community delivery models. For example, siblings are encouraged to participate or lead activities. Neighbors and other friends with and without disabilities can also participate. Depending on the setup at home, setting up activities outdoors may provide more space. The goal for the at-home program is for families to play together. It can be run on its own or as a support for an in-school or in-community young athletes program. The program can be done following the activity guide to structure playtime. The program does not have to be quite as structured as the in-school or community programs. Rather, parents can select two to three activities to practice during each section. I have uploaded the parent activity cards onto Canvas. Each of the pages of the activity cards is a different standalone activity. These activity cards make it really easy for parents to pick a few cards and practice these skills for about 20 to 30 minutes. As mentioned, the at-home program is a great way to continue practicing the skills learned in an in-school or in-community program. Coaches for the other delivery models can share the activities they practice during their sessions to provide support for parents at home in terms of selecting and practicing skills. It's really important that families are empowered to participate and encourage their children to practice at home. Parents should not feel limited by the suggested equipment. Most of the equipment can be replaced with things you can find around the home or purchase for very little cost. Parents can get creative with how the activities are implemented and encouraged to come up with new activities that cater to their child's strengths and difficulties. The goal of this class is to create a repository of activities for parents and community coaches to use that correspond with the existing activities in the Young Athletes Program. Parents are encouraged to invite siblings and other children in the community to play. As mentioned, Young Athletes helps increase inclusion of children with disabilities. Inviting other kids in the neighborhood or community to participate gives those kids opportunities to learn about and play with children with disabilities. Parents are encouraged to reach out to other families through the local Special Olympics Family Support Network or through their local Special Olympics programs. Lastly, the goal of the program is to support parents in playing with their children in a fun setting. Okay, this concludes the overview of the Special Olympics Young Athletes Program. As I mentioned, in the subsequent lectures, I will build upon this knowledge and help guide you through the different skill modules and the at-home implementation. Again, the goal of this class is that you and your group will be able to create awesome, thoughtful, and useful activities that correspond with the Young Athletes Program. Here are some key take-home messages. First, individualization and modification are key to ensuring everyone is successful in the program. 
Individualization and modification aren't just important for children who are struggling with skills, but are also important for children who are very skillful and need more challenge to stay engaged and continue in developing their skills. Second, all young athletes will learn and perform at different rates. Good coaches let the skills and abilities of the children they work with dictate the pace within and across sessions. Third, family participation and support are critical for success. Again, the goal of this class is to make it as easy as possible for parents to practice at home and have lots of different activities they can choose from that correspond with the skills taught in young athletes. This last point on this slide isn't super relevant for you since the goal is not for you to become a coach and run your own program at this point. However, this class will give you the skills needed to be amazing volunteers and support people for the Young Athletes Program in your community. And if you're interested in becoming a Young Athletes Coach, Special Olympics Coach for a particular sport, or volunteer for another Special Olympic Program, I highly encourage you to do so. There's always a need for great coaches and volunteers. Okay, the quiz for these lectures will be posted on Canvas shortly. The quiz will cover the most important aspects of this program and lecture, including the goals of the program, the basic structure of the program, coach responsibilities, the types of skills developed in the program, and modifications to the program to meet the needs of different children. Please let me know if you have any questions about this lecture or any of the other lectures in this section. Good luck.